What's going on everybody? It's Friday, February 15. Following our, and I'm pleased to say, wildly popular spotlight on Death Stranding and Days Gone PlayStation 4 exclusives just last month, it's time for a deeper dive into a third AAA exclusive which looks to be a phenomenally beautifully crafted samurai-themed new IP from first-party Sony studio Sucker Punch, a studio famed for its infamous series across PS3 and 4. Now if you take a look back at infamous Second Son released way back in 2014, even on the standard PS4, that's the vanilla one. Second Son still holds up today in 2019. Now the first game I cared enough about really to get the platinum trophy which I'll admit isn't too difficult to obtain. Anyway that was then and now we have a look at PS4's last foray. It's a big swung song going into 2020, a selection of quite possibly the last high profile big budget titles we'll see on a fantastically well supported system nearing its sixth year on the market. Sourced via GamesRadar.com, the full article and interview has been linked in this video's description for your perusal, though if you're too busy or too lazy to read, stand by. Slight disclaimer here, I will relay a portion of the article including interview quotes verbatim. Due to YouTube compression, the following video footage may not be totally representative of frame rate or the visual quality of the final build. Okay then, go so Tsushima, let's deep dive in. So, Sucker Punch developed Ghost of Tsushima certainly knows how to sell its story, a story of a lone warrior in 13th century Japan. If you must pigeonhole a game, when Ghost of Tsushima is best described as an action-adventure stealth game with samurai protagonist Jim Sakai forced to learn the way of the ghost fighting techniques to take on the Mongol invaders. Now he won't be alone though, he'll have his katana, a grappling hook and his trusty horse. Gotta have a horse, right? So Sucker Punch has revealed that famed filmmaker Akira Kurosawa of Seventh Samurai fame was a huge influence on the look of Ghost of Tsushima and it shows. As for the gameplay, creative director Nate Fox saves the team on doing something different this time around. Here's a quote. In Infamous, you explore powers. In this game, we let you explore what it is to be a samurai inside of this enormous landscape of medieval Japan. Don't know about you, but it certainly sounds good to me, and one of many samurai-themed games heading to PS4 and various other platforms. Now, protagonist Jin Sakai is one of the last line of defenses against the Mongol hordes that are invading Tsushima, but unfortunately he's got katana skills befitting a one-man army. Rather than ornate armor, Jin prefers to wear a straw raincoat to better insulate himself from the rain and winds. His red attire mirrors the red leaves that swirl and drift around the island, a feature prominent in the gameplay trailer. Now of course Jin can't possibly fight off the Mongol army all on his own. He has to gather allies like Masako, the skilled archer who features prominently in the gameplay debut trailer and her allegiance with Jin goes south when he protects the monk that she wants revenge on, resulting in a duel even as the enemy forces approach over the hills on horseback. Clearly recruiting the people of Tsushima to fight by your side won't be an easy task but it's ultimately necessary. As you probably already guessed, Jin is a master of the sword and there will be plenty of melee combat as you cut through the Mongol invaders and their many scouting parties. From what we've seen, the skirmishes focus on the art of the counter-attack and with Jin patiently waiting for his opponents to charge him before deflecting ready their strikes and slicing them for the kill. When it's you against many, you'll need to really properly time your counters to ward off all types of weapons including swords, spears and shield slams. Now there are also stealth segments which give off a serious Tenchu vibe where you get the jump on a group of enemies and trigger a really time slowing targeting system that lets Jin execute multiple foes in quick succession. Now to help you reach better ambushing spots, Jin has a grappling hook no less to quickly scale structures. He can even throw it out mid jump much like Nathan Drake's acrobatic grappling in Uncharted 4. Now Sucker Punch's new game moves away from the industrial cities of the infamous series in favour of feudal Japan and it's the year 1274 and you're on the titular island of Tsushima, Japan. As you can see from the gameplay trailer it's rather stunning and you play as one of the last surviving samurai warriors and 1274 just happens to be the year the Mongol and really empire invades the island of Tsushima and it's time to get your samurai on and fight to protect your homeland. Here's a quote. So when we hit upon the Mongol invasion of Tsushima in 1274, it all clicked. Suddenly you knew who the heroes were and who the villains were, what the stakes were for the world, and you had a video game. 
explains Nate Fox, game director at Sucker Punch. Now, the decision to stay open world following on from Sucker Punch's success with Infamous was apparently clear from the start. Here's another quote. We wanted to stay open world because we're giving authority and power to the player. We didn't want to really go away from that. We think it's integral to modern gaming that players are in charge. All of what's shown in our debut trailer was captured in our game engine. That's the interactive world we've painstakingly crafted together. That's the world we're going to set on fire. The artists, engineers here at Sucker Punch have brought this world to life on PlayStation 4. From tall grass blowing in the wind to the call of a far off crane, we want to make it feel real. Wow. Now, according to Sucker Punch, the action will all take place on the huge island filled with a lot of different places, towns, and people. Apparently, as the last samurai, you're going to really have to abandon your honorable tactics of old to forge a new way of fighting, literally the way of the ghosts. Ah, so that explains the title then. So the reveal trailer shows off just some of the weapons and gameplay features, really including katanas, longbows and armoured horses. But before you get all excited about swinging your shiny new samurai sword, you might want to check out the game's release date or lack of one. Sucker Punch hasn't even put a vague year on its shiny new game, let alone any kind of release window. The studio has this to say on the matter. We're excited to finally be able to talk about the game and look forward to sharing more in the coming months. Keeping it a secret for so long has been painful. The trailer is the perfect way to share with the world what we've been dying to play for so many years. Fighting back invaders in feudal Japan, mastering the katana and building your legend as the ghost. Hmm, so if you are in any doubt that Sucker Punch is gifted at creating immersive worlds that are full of colour, then you should check out some of the concept art they've released for Ghost of Tsushima. From the water lilies to the temples, there's plenty of beauty in feudal Japan. And Sucker Punch even sent someone to Japan just to record the sounds of the wilds, from the birds in the air to the sounds of the trees brushing against each other. It's all there to sell you on that idea of the time machine, that you're stepping back into a time, to a world that's now within reach. Just like the ever-changing dynamic weather, things are also constantly changing in flux for Jin after being brought about by really a specific samurai code that demands he face his enemies head on, state his lineage and bring forth a challenger, Jin has to throw all that away in order to get the upper hand on the ruthless Mongols. When he drops down from the roof of the temple in the middle of no less than three Mongols, everything switches into slow motion like Red Dead Redemption's Dead Eye, as he takes down one after the other with deadly katana strikes. So I'm betting that it's a special skill power you have to unleash when things get tough. Which they will, by the way, because Ghost of Tsushima is tough. So tough, in fact, that it's been toned down for the demo. Sucker Punch wants you to feel scared, it wants you to feel outnumbered, overwhelmed, so even though the Mongols taunted you for a bit longer in the demo, they won't hesitate in the actual game's release. Prepare to feel the conflict Samurai are going through too, as by the sounds of it you'll start off with a certain traditional skill, and then you have to rework them to suit the stealthier, more tactical approach to taking out the invaders. Jin will be dead in seconds if he lets his guard down, so Ghost of Tsushima is going to push you to your limit to reflect Jin's relatively weak armour and slight build. Not everything will come in flurries. There's also a natural ebb and flow to the combat, which pauses inherent to the rhythm of fighting. As the enemy AI sizes you up, you'll do so in return. And a similar amount of care is being paid to the voicing of Ghost of Tsushima. Discussions were apparently ongoing as to whether to include alternate voicing of the entire game in Japanese. We have English subtitles, of course, which was tried out for the demo, but really the press saw that and played it, and it worked profoundly well. By the end of the demo, players will have feeling or believing in some sort of time machine. Everything seems to melt away when the game's on screen. A combination of the gentle breeze, the distant sound of bird song, and the rustling of Jin's armor lulls you into truly believing that you are a samurai. Ghost of Tsushima tracks the Japanese as they try to find their path to survival, and you'd better hope that you find your way too. Well, how incredible is this? PlayStation 4 is definitely going out with a humongous bang. Death Stranding, Days Gone, Ghost of Tsushima, The Last of Us Part 2. These are the cross-generational titles you can expect to find in enhanced form and really bridge the transition to Sony's next-generation hardware, PlayStation 5. Of course, you'll be playing the standard version by way of backwards compatibility with or without a patch, but I can see these games being repackaged with PlayStation 5 enhanced, plastered all over these late bloomers. But what say you? Do look out for our Naughty Dogs, The Last of Us Part 2 deep dive in the oh not too distant future right here on Foxy Games UK. 
Do share your thoughts and opinions on today's news because that unfortunately brings us to the end of another video, but let's continue the discussion in the comments. And for all your current and next-gen news updates, rumor and rampant speculation, hit the like button, spread the word, and keep it locked to Foxy Games UK. Remember, all relevant links where applicable can be found in this video's description, and subscribe to Foxy Games UK. Remember to hit the notification bell so you never miss content. Thumbs up if you like it here and this type of feature, and help us reach more like-minded gamers simply by sharing this video. And if you'd like to consider supporting Foxy Games UK via Patreon or grab yourself a Foxy Games UK branded t-shirt or hoodie available in various colors and designs, you'll find both links in the video description. I really appreciate the support. So don't forget the Gamer Couch podcast this Sunday live from 5 p.m. ET and 10 p.m. if you're in the UK, moderated by our very own cat, aka Bullet Hell Honey. Yes, the Gamer Couch podcast this Sunday. Keep it locked. But until then, and until the next video, remember, play games, not corporations.